What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 247 and we start today's episode off with a couple of scout reports here. Uh, one scout is currently based in England and the other one is in Brazil. Yes, he is Brazil. Um, so, <laughs> said that a bit surprisingly there. I should know really where my scouts are, Jesus. And um, yeah, again, these scout reports are essentially basically meaningless. I mean, we could sign these players to our academy if they look good, but the reality is they won't get promoted to the first team. And even if they did, they wouldn't play. And even if they did play, they wouldn't really get any kind of progression because obviously this is most likely going to be our last season of the series. So it's kind of pointless to have me doing that. But it's just it's just one of those features, you know, you scouting, even though I talked about it about 150 times already, and uh, quite a few of you do disagree with my opinions on you scouting. Um, even though I, I'm not a fan of it this year because I do think it's been a little bit, it's a little bit too hard now. Um, it's still something I really enjoy doing, what can I say, it's still fun to see a scout report uh, during the month so I can check out how some young players are doing, but uh, anyway, we take on uh, Southampton for the first game of today's episode here at the Den, and uh, this came on the back of Brian Carrasco coming to us and saying his role at the club is basically not good enough for him, and again, I'm not going to keep going on about it, but whenever I get one of those emails, I usually make uh, take the mickey out of it basically, because it's just ridiculous, but um, even so, that's the, I think that's the first time Carrasco in this series has ever complained about it. His role and um, you know he's 31 now so even if he was starting to get dropped which he's not you know it would still make no sense whatsoever but uh, anyway we take on Southampton and uh, of course not much happened in the first half and in the second half Southampton would win a penalty after the former Southampton left back Luke Shaw brought I think it I can't remember who it was to be honest but he brought uh, a Southampton player in down the box and it was a definite penalty and what a great chance Southampton to score the first goal of the game here nine minutes after the restart and unfortunately they did Zanev uh, tricked me with the goalkeeper there I thought it was going to go to one of the sides unfortunately he didn't he went down the middle and Southampton took the lead in this game so not a good start for us of course still unbeaten in the league so far we've won every single game as well so had a fantastic Fantastic start so far, but not really the start we wanted in the second half of this game. And in the 59th minute, we tried to equalise here. Scott Trees got on the ball and found also Chamberlain, but his shot was well saved by Jones, and it was tipped behind for a corner. And from that corner, we eventually crossed the ball in with Brian Carrasco into the centre. Eric Deer goes for the header, but it's straight into the gloves of the goalkeeper. So unfortunately, still 1-0 at this point in time. But uh, we were starting to get ourselves back into the game. And in the 69th minute, Oxlade Chamberlain goes down the left-hand side. Another former Southampton player. Keeps on going. Really good run. We swing the cross to the far post. Oscar Polo collects the ball here. Nice little scoop turn. Then takes aim. It's a good save by Jones. But Oxlade Chamberlain just about manages to follow it in. I just love the goalkeeper's dive though, it was such a slow motion despairing dive and as uh, Oscar Oxlade Chamberlain scores, I'm glad we're back on level terms but the dive from the goalkeeper was so funny, it was like a little bit of a hesitation and then like a sort of a, a log dive, really slow delayed reaction dive, no, just couldn't get to the ball but um, yeah we actually drew the game uh, one apiece which is I don't know, it was, it was really, really, really surprising because obviously the last league game we battered Chelsea at Stamford Bridge by five goals to two and even though they made a bad start to the season, it was still a really good result. Then we drew against Porto 0-0 and I thought I'd, I thought I'd bounce back and win that game quite comfortably, no disrespect to Southampton and unfortunately I didn't, I, I can only draw the game and I, I guess it was just one of those unexpected results to be honest but um, even so, 1-1 one, one draw and that does mean as well it's the first time in the league this year where we failed to get the win. Our record now is nine, uh, nine wins and one draw from ten games, so still unbelievably impressive. But even so, it's a shame to slip up for the first time, and hopefully we'll be able to rectify that in our next league game. But uh, anyway, we took on Middlesbrough uh, for the second game of today's episode here in the Capital One Cup here at the Den. And of course, as you can see by the team I played, it was a really weak one. No real surprise there, but we would actually take the lead in the sixth minute. Anderson Rodriguez with some absolutely fantastic skill on the left flank. Some lovely skill moves. Goes down left-hand side. Lovely little drag back fake. Goes down left-hand side. Crosses the ball into the centre. And it is Ricky Tilson who heads the ball in. So Tilson, a player we signed from uh, Manchester City... Uh, uh, on our return to the den in our first season coming back here he's always been a bench slash reserve player he's never been a first team player but he's one of those players where I'm sure you guys had him in a career mode as well even though they'll always be reserve players for you no matter what happens whenever you do play them in the odd cup games or the very few league games during a the season they'll always play really really well and you'll want to play them on a more regular basis but you've got better options there so you never do but that's, that's what Tilson is for me he's one of those players who always does well even though he rarely ever plays but 
but still, it was 1-0. The goalkeeper then made a very good save. And in the 21st minute, brilliant. McCola takes on Halliday, beats him for pace, goes down the right-hand side. He ends up trying to fuse a cross in. Williams makes the challenge, but comes back to McCola, gets inside and shoots, but it's a brilliant save by Jason Steele. Fantastic stop with his leg, and he keeps the score at 1 0. And in the 26th minute, another chance for us here as we kept the pressure on. We get it with a howl. Howl finds Michael and Glad. Big strike goes through one on one. Nice little fake shot. Tries to shoot, it's blocked, comes back to him, and again, Jason Steele makes a really good save. So, still 1 0 as things stood. That was how the first half would finish. And in the second half, you see Rodriguez play the ball over the top towards Michael and Goo. Williams doesn't deal with it, and Goo keeps on going. Again, makes a great challenge. Tries to chip the goalkeeper steal, but it was a close, uh, close proximity there. He was never going to get the, uh, the trajectory, and unfortunately, it was a simple save. So still one nil. And in the 61st minute, Millsborough had a free kick here. We failed to deal with it with Topless and Catamol, and unfortunately, Chiquinho, is that how you pronounce that? Ends up equalising for Middlesbrough just past the hour mark as Jack Butlin collapses to the floor, and I'm not surprised because that was basically their first shot of the game. And it was really, really frustrating because as I went to head the ball away with Topless, it just hit Catamole in the face. And unfortunately, it was, it was like a free ball into the run of Chiquinho. I mean, that's just really unfortunate, isn't it? There's nothing I can do about that. But it's just one of those things. And again, I'm a firm believer that uh, luck and uh, things like that balance themselves out at the end of the season. So it's just one of those things. It's uh, our time for misfortune here. And Middlesbrough do equalise through that. So one apiece. And in the 31st minute, Todd Kane crosses the ball in towards Anas Rodriguez. But he his header just about goes past Jason Steele and makes it 2-1 so thankfully 10 minutes after conceding the equalising goal we are back in front in this game and I'm very pleased with that because you know we should be able to beat Middlesbrough even with a weaker side we should be able to beat the uh, championship side and then in the 74th minute it's another great chance for us McCola goes to chip the goalkeeper but again Steele makes the save so wasn't really doing well with the chips in this game but uh, still it was 2-1 as things stood and in injury time here in the 90th minute we did say we were going to close the game out but as Middlesbrough go down left down Side, they cross the ball into the centre, and unfortunately for us, Maine ends up hitting the post with the header. And it falls straight back to him, and he puts it into the empty net. And again, it's really, really unfortunate because we should have got the ball away. Yes, obviously that's my mistake, but as soon as he ends up hitting the post from the header, it goes straight back to him, and he has an open goal to put the ball into the back of the net. So very, very frustrating. Both goals were really, uh, really unfortunate and very, very unlucky for us. But even so, it was my poor defending as well. So it was a bit of a mix between the two, but. Um, that was the last attack of the game, and Middlesbrough would uh, turn the game into extra time. So that was really annoying. We should have won this game in normal time. And the fact we were now going into extra time was very frustrating. Because even though we had backup players out there, and I uh, wouldn't be too worried if their fitness was going to be going down, it was still frustrating knowing we should have won this game in normal time. But uh, the first chance extra time fell there. But Ezekiel's nice little acrobatic kick went over the bar. And in the 114th minute, another great chance. McCoda finds Todd Kane, who shoots. But again, Jason Steele makes a really, really, really really good save and it was you know he was under pressure all game Jason Steele he kept on making those saves and uh, on the last chance of extra time fell here in the 120, uh, 120th minute Ezekiel goes on a run really good chance tried to catch Steele out the near post but he stands strong and makes a save so Steele was making save after save in this game have an absolutely brilliant performance and he ended up basically single-handedly carrying his team through the extra time period and into penalties so penalties here at the den very frustrating there's been a lot of penalty shootouts recently in this career but very frustrating because although I've won every single penalty shootout but one in this career mode it's still frustrating when we have to go there and as you can see as well 15 shots 13 on target compared to Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough's 4 and 2 on target and the game finished 2-2 two -two. that's just frustration at its finest and of course, those two goals were quite fluky as well. So, very frustrating 120 minutes. And of course, it would result in penalties. So, I fancy my chances, obviously. But you've always got to uh, take into the fact that uh, the pressure will be on me, basically. Because there's nothing to lose from Mills' point of view. As they are the weakest side. But we would score the first penalty for Rodriguez. Then Maine would stand up and score his as well. Sends Butler in the wrong way. Uh, he obviously scored the goal to take the game to extra time. So, he scores there as well. And it's one apiece. Ezekiel then took the next penalty. But Steele pulled off the save. Really really good stop by the goalkeeper and that gave Millsbury a chance to make it 2-1 here in the shootout and give them the lead which Chiquinho unfortunately did he obviously scored the first goal for Middlesbrough so both of their penalty takers who scored the goals in normal time had scored here Todd Kane then stood up and took the next one but thankfully for us we got back on the scoring uh, here as he sends Steel the wrong way and the following penalty would then be taken by Canavan for Middlesbrough would he be able to score and keep up Millsbury's 100% record unfortunately he would I stayed down the middle again with Butland but unfortunately 
it was to no avail. So Middlesbrough now back in front of 3-2. Makola then took the next penalty and sent Steel the wrong way. So we're getting ourselves back on level terms, but I really needed Butland to save a penalty because things weren't going well right now. And as McKay then stood up for Middlesbrough, unfortunately the one time I didn't stay down the middle, they go down the middle. And unfortunately that means that we have to score this penalty or we go out. And it's Sean Howe against Jason Steele and Steele pulls off the save. And unfortunately we have lost the penalty shootout as Howell then gets a boot in the face from Steele. And we are out of the Capital One Cup. Unbelievably surprising. It is a shocking result. Yes, I don't really care because I don't care about the competition. But even so, it is a shocking result. And I guess it just goes to show you've got to expect the unexpected on this game because anything can happen. But as always guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, please leave a like because it's much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.